Hello everybody, Conti here with another video. How to create an elliptic highlight effect on a JPEG image file in DaVinci Resolve 16.2.3. Inside your edits window, hold Ctrl and press I to insert the image file that you wish to use in this project. Use command instead of Ctrl if you are a Mac user. Select your chosen image file from your media pool master bin and drag this to the start of your timeline. My image file will stay on screen as the video is playing for 5 seconds in total. Clicking on the clip attributes icon in the bottom right corner of the thumbnail of your chosen image file, we can identify the frame rate for your particular file in this project. Each second of screen time that my chosen image file has here will comprise of 24 stills. Right click on the edit representing your image file and go to Open in Fusion page. Inside your Nodes panel, ensure that Media in 1 is selected. Hold Shift and press Space to open up the Select Tool window. Go to Find Brightness and Contrast using the search box above the Cancel and Add buttons. Select this tool from the menu and go to click on Add. With this new Brightness and Contrast 1 node selected, Go to Inspector and darken the image by reducing the brightness level. In this particular project here, I'm going to reduce the brightness of my chosen picture to minus 0.47. As we preview this particular image in the edit window, the vibrance levels on the color shades in my image are still quite high. Returning to my fusion window once more, in order to reduce the vibrancy of the colors on my image, I'm going to decrease the contrast to minus 0.64. Ensure that your brightness and contrast one node is still selected. Press shift and space once again. And search for the ellipse tool. Select and go to add. This new ellipse node should be connected to the brightness and contrast through the effect mask, which is represented by a light blue arrow. With the new ellipse node selected, go to Inspector. To add a fade effect to the edges of your ellipse shape, increase the value for the soft edge variable. In this particular project, I'm going to increase soft edge to 0.1. Note how the dark effect that we previously set in the brightness and contrast node is set inside the ellipse shape. In order to shift this darkness to the exterior so that this surrounds the shape instead, what we can do is left click on the invert box inside Inspector. Modify the size of your ellipse highlight by adjusting the values inside Width and Height. Ensure that the values set to both variables are the same to maintain the circular shape that you have on screen. In this particular project, I'm going to set both Width and Height to 0.25. My intention is to have the ellipse shape zigzag its way down to the object on the pavement next to the brick wall at the bottom of the screen. The box between the two arrowheads in the middle of your ellipse shape represents the centre of this highlight. The coordinates of this central point of your shape can be modified by adjusting the values inside centre X and Y inside the inspector. Note how when we change centre X to 0.0, .0 the center of the ellipse shape goes to the very edge of the left side of our frame. A center X value of 1.0 on the other hand, shifts the center of the ellipse shape to the opposite side, at the very edge of our frame once more. Changing center Y to 1.0 shifts the middle of the ellipse to the top border of the frame. And center Y set to zero shifts the center of the ellipse shape to the bottom edge of your image frame. As previously mentioned, this particular image of the brick wall has a frame rate of 24. After the first second, I wish for the highlight to have moved from the top left corner to the right side of the wall and to have shifted downwards slightly. To set my starting position, with the ellipse node still selected, I'm going to ensure that I'm at the very start of my video by going to frame 0. I will set center X to 0.2 and center Y to 0.8. Once these coordinates are set, 
left click once in the diamond icon representing a keyframe setting to the right of this variable. Now I'm going to skip ahead to the one second mark on my timeline represented by frame 24. Once the ellipse shape reaches the opposite side of the screen, I wish for the center of the shape to be 0.2 away from the image frame border. So therefore at frame 24, I'm going to set center X to 0.8. Note how a green line appears on your preview window between the starting position and the place where the center of the ellipse shape will be at the second keyframe. This enables the user to see the path that their ellipse shape will be going along as their video plays. To have the ellipse shape shift downwards slightly, I'm going to change center Y to 0.6. The keyframe icon should be automatically highlighted in red for center X and Y. Now skipping forward by another second to frame 48. I wish for the ellipse shape to have shifted down further, but back to the left side of the screen once again, parallel with its starting position. And so center X will be set to 0.2, as we did with frame 0. And to make the shape shift downwards once again, I will set center Y to 0.4. To ensure that the shape consistently moves down each second by 0.2 on the Y axis. And finally, by 3 seconds at frame 72, my ellipse shape should reach the object on the pavement next to the brick wall towards the bottom of my screen. I will select the box between the two arrowheads in the middle of my ellipse shape and drag this manually to the point on the image where I wish for this highlight to remain for the final two seconds. Again, the keyframe setting should be automatically applied when I'm adjusting the location of the highlight on the screen using my mouse. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that video was useful to you. If you enjoyed the content and wish to be notified about future uploads on this channel, please like, share and subscribe. Join me soon for another video. Take care.